In this video, we're going to talk about the ClickHouse database engine. You can run it on your laptop. You can run it on a server node. You can run it as a cluster on multiple nodes if you need high availability and scalability. The largest known cluster has over 4,000 nodes. Or instead of running it yourself, you could use the database engine via a cloud service like ClickHouse Cloud. An example of a service running in ClickHouse Cloud is the ClickHouse SQL Playground. So this contains more than 30 data sets with over 200 sample queries and more than 600 billion rows of data. Now we can connect to it from the UI, but in this video, we're gonna have a look at how to connect to it with the ClickHouse Client. So we call ClickHouse Client, we pass in the host, we tell it the user, which is demo, and then you can see we have now got our connection and we're ready to do some queries. So we're gonna start by counting how many records there are in the UK price paid data set. And you can see it comes back pretty quickly, just over 26 million rows. Let's have a look at what one of those rows looks like. So you see we've got the price, the date, the postcodes, and other address information as well. I'm gonna bring in this query here, which computes the median and 99 percentile prices by year and then draws a nice little bar chart and we filter it so we get the years from 2010 onwards. And so you can see the price of property, as you might imagine, in the UK is steadily going up. So that's ClickHouse Server. Now you can also run the database engine from the command line using ClickHouse Local. With ClickHouse Local, you don't need to start a server. You just run the CLI and then you get a prompt where you can write queries. ClickHouse Local is good for ad hoc querying of data on your machine or even data that's in cloud storage. And you can also persist data in tables for even faster querying on your own machine. So let's have a look at that. So we're gonna call ClickHouse Local, we're gonna store the data in a demo CHDB, and then we're gonna set a bunch of parameters just to make things a bit easier to work with. And then let's bring it back in that query that computes the median and 99 percentile price of properties for each year from 2010 onwards. Now, one thing we have changed in here is that we are in our from clause, we're saying from remote secure, and then we've got the path to our SQL playground, then the database and the table, and then our user. So this is a way that even from ClickHouse local, or actually, to be honest, even from ClickHouse server, we can go and query another ClickHouse server somewhere else. And if we run that query, we get the same results as before. Let's try another query. So this one computes the median price for each decade grouped by county, sorted by which county had the highest price in the 2020s decade. And you can see it comes back. So Windsor and Maidenhead, Greater London and Surrey are the most expensive parts of the UK. So that's not too surprising. Now, one cool thing that we can do is let's imagine that I've got this England counties CSV file and you can see it comes back so we've got a county we've got the total population and we've got the region and I'd like to join the data in this file with that query from that I'm doing against my ClickHouse server and so we can join these two data sets together using the query that we've got now and so what it'll do is it'll run the CTE on the server and send the data back down to my ClickHouse local and then do the join on my machine. So it's kind of like a hybrid query execution, if you like. Now ClickHouse local is also very good for querying Parquet files. So we're gonna query some files with metadata about images created on Midjourney. So let's first create ourselves a database called Midjourney and we'll switch over to it. And we'll then create a view to make it a little bit easier to query the Midjourney files. We'll then count how many rows there are across all of those Parquet files. It's gonna take a little bit of time because my Wi-Fi is generally terrible, so we'll speed it up a little bit. You can see it comes back 55 million records. Let's now describe uh, on that select star from Midjourney Remote query so we can see what fields we've got. So you see it comes back, so we've got width the, for, for each image, we've got the ID, we've got the content, we've got the image ID, height, width, URL, size, and so on. I'm gonna have a look at the dimensions of the images that are being created. So we'll get the height, the width, and we'll count it, and then we'll group by all and order by the count. And so you can see it comes back. Most images are square, 1024 by 1024 pixel images. Let's now see how we can actually create data in ClickHouse Local. So we're gonna create ourselves a table called images, we'll order it by the timestamp, and then we're gonna select from just one of those mid-journey files. And we're gonna use this setting schema, inference make columns nullable equals zero, so that it's not gonna make every single 
column nullable. So we don't really want that when we're working with ClickUs. And we'll speed this up a little bit. It takes just over 30 seconds and then we've got our data ingested. And we'll just do a quick count to make sure it worked. And you can see it comes back with 1 million records. Now, lastly, you can run the ClickUs database engine standalone in memory embedded into a host process and that's CHDB. So it has bindings for Python, Go, Rust, Node.js, Bun, and .NET. And there's zero data copy from the database engine to the language library binding. So we're gonna launch IPython, and we're gonna be using the session version of CHDB so that we can connect it to that demo CHDB database that we just created with ClickHouse Local. And then we'll tell it that we wanna switch over to the mid-journey database. And then I can write a query that finds the most popular heights and widths, the same as what we did in ClickHouse Local. And it's gonna come back as a pandas data frame. So you see, we get back same information here, but this time it's a pandas data frame. Now let's say we wanna add the resolution in Python code. So we're gonna just do that computation in Python code. We could do it in ClickHouse, but just for the, for the for argument's sake, we'll do it in Python. Okay, and what we're gonna do now is query that pandas data frame. So we'll say we're gonna get the resolution, we'll sum all the counts, and then we're gonna to group together the widths and the heights. And then we can use this Python table engine on image dim, so i.e. on that pandas data frame, and then we can write the rest of our query. And you can see it comes back, so 1024 by 1024 is still the most popular and there aren't any other dimensions that have the same resolution, but you can see some of the other ones are now grouped together. So we've got lots of videos on ClickHouse Server, ClickHouse Local and CHDB. So check out this playlist for more.